All right, welcome to Make a Path Presents. I'm Ronnie Hayes, and we are diving into Stranger Things Season 2, Episode 6. It's the next day now. I got some daylight. Uh, the other few reviews I was doing late at night, so I would watch it, have all the lights out, do the um, um, microphone, you know, to give a mini review on the spot after each episode, and then just throw images on the screen and get it posted and jump right into the next episode. Try to get it as quick as possible. Uh, now we have some daylight out. I'm gonna pop this up on the screen. Hopefully, I'll get as many as we can, as many as I can, where it's the old-fashioned talking head type. However, um, this is gonna be raw though, so bear with me. We're gonna dive right into this because if we have to go into the editing and imaging, I'm gonna save that. The images, I'm gonna save that for the uh, breakdowns and stuff like that coming up after everyone has a good enough time or a long enough time to watch them all. I'm going to wait a few weeks, maybe a month or so, and then we'll start breaking them down. Anyway, episode six is called The Spy. Again, loved it. Another episode that's knocking it out of the park. We pick up where we left off with the creepy ass. I went back and rewatched that ending, too. Man, he was so creepy. And, oh, oh, peep this. I talked in a, in a previous review about there being a uh, behind-the-scenes stuff, and they need to release it on... Um, Netflix and maybe possibly down the line release it on Blu-ray. Somebody commented and said there's actually a Beyond the Stranger Things. Uh, there's a video with seven or eight episodes, 20 minute or 30 minute episodes, and it's kind of like The Talking Dead. I haven't started it yet. I will once I finish Stranger Things, but definitely check that out. That I'm extremely excited about. So I do want to check that out, but I want to put that out there in case you finish the season and, and you want even more. Okay, so we got Will at the research lab, and they're trying to figure out what's going on with him, but it appears that, like we talked about previously, the entity, the badass shadow, is uh, using Will as a host. We get more of uh, Steve and Dustin throwing meat, setting the trap. Actually, no, I believe they were, yeah, they were uh, going to Dustin's house, and then they saw the, the tunnel, the hole, and they want to set a trap for the uh, the baby Demogorgon. So they start throwing out the meat on the railroad tracks, and they have some great character development between these two in that scene, talking about girls and not caring, and then eventually to his hair. There's some real uh, chuckle moments in there. We get more on uh, Bob the Brain. Not really sure what type of story they're building uh, for Bob, except for just being that supportive character. <clears throat> I, I remember in the trailer he was running, so obviously he's going to make it to a point where we get some action out of him. But they're doing a good job developing his character. I think they're doing a great job. We get Nancy and Jonathan. They're a thing now. <laughs> After I just put my foot in my mouth before about liking that they're best friends. Uh, yeah, sure, I, I like their best friends. And they did, I have to admit, they did kind of uh, soften the blow when they had Nancy admit, yeah, you know, I was, I, I was interested in you. And then after a month later, she just gave in and went to Steve, and they bring that up. They, they did a good job. I'm not 100% sold on it yet, but they did a good job, a real good job at um, highlighting that Steve was, uh, you know, um, he felt safe. I believe that's the way the guy brought it up. That, And I don't remember his name, but the quack, or at least I thought he was a quack. He seems like an all right dude now, a little out there, but that conspiracy theorist. One of the funny parts where I was dying, though, <laughs> was when um, Nancy and John finally hooked up and he was supposed to sleep on the pull-out couch, and instead he sleeps in there with Nancy. They have a make-out session and go into... It was very 1980s. I, off the top of my head, I can't even... Or not, not even 1980s, but it had that vibe. That scene had that vibe from like the 80s and 90s. And off the top of my head, I can't figure out what it is, but for the life of me, there's something there that reminds me of, uh, of an old movie. I, I don't remember what it is, but anyway, the next day he's making breakfast. The quack guy, the guy who wrote the books, or the, the investigator, the private eye... And he sits down and he <laughs> he asks John, so how how was the pullout or something? <laughs> and uh, Jonathan almost chokes on his orange juice or whatever he was drinking. That's funny. <laughs> that shit was funny. I didn't expect a joke like that. I knew he was going to say something slick because the guy was on point. He kind of peeped what was going on between those two. But yeah, when he, <laughs> when he asked about the pullout, referring to the couch, <laughs> but maybe kind of alluding to the pullout method <laughs> at the same time, you know, he was, but for us as an audience and then where Jonathan's head was, fucking hilarious. All right, so then we got Hopper saying sorry to L. 
again, I'm really liking the direction they're going with these two characters. And the father figure, obviously, it fits perfect. He His backstory is uh, losing his daughter, Sarah, and now he's got Ellie's taken care of. They grew a bond, and now he's trying to reach out to her. She doesn't hear it, which is a little disappointing. I mean, we as audience members like the rewards and connections between the characters. I guess that tells us, the audience, that um, uh, it kind of clears it up because he was pretty damn pissed off. One scene that I also laughed my ass off was when they were setting the trap for the Demogorgon. They, um, Dustin and Lucas were talking behind a car, ducked behind a car as, uh, what's his name? Um, Steven and Steve and the girl, the Max. Holy crap. I know the names, but then it's like it's something in my brain is like, go quickly. And then I'm like, what the hell are the names? But he, she's helping him set up traps and he slams a chair on the car and he's like, well, why, why is the only one helping me? This random girl. <laughs> I love that. I don't know what it was, but that one line about random girl was friggin' hilarious. We have a scene that I loved because Paul Reiser is playing this doctor in the research facility and his name is Sam. I can't remember what his last name is, doctor or whatever. Sam's in the room and they're trying to figure out what to do about this growth and they bring up the the only knowledge they have is we need to keep flaming it, we need to kill it, fight it, we need to fight it off, try to get the gate closed or whatever and uh, in, if we do that, it's going to kill the boy and you know, Sam, that doctor is like, and at this time, I'm assuming he's putting on a friendly front, but he's evil or mean or, you know, part of the bad guys. He even comes off like that when he's talking to Nancy and Jonathan, but then he goes, well, what about the boy? You know, if, if we do this and it kills the boy, we got to figure out something else where we can keep, get the kid to live and also combat these, uh, this growth, this organism. And one doctor is like, listen, if it kills the boy, quite, quite frankly, it kills the boy. Like, who gives a shit? And Paul Reiser's character was like, say that to me again. <laughs> I was like, oh, you got me. I thought you were going to legit make this dude a bad guy 100%. And you, you, you turn that around. I'll be honest. I didn't see that coming. I really thought they were going to um, subtly imply like, well, we don't know where he is. Is he good? Is he bad? But we know he's bad, right? I mean, come on. But no, he ended up being, um, he ended up, at least at this point in time, it appears uh, there could be something else going on. Maybe he wants the, the will to experiment on later on, and he wants to keep him alive. But at this point in time, it does appear that uh, he, yeah, he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to kill the kid just to accomplish their goal of this organism when they can just simply look for, not simply, but they could look for a different way to to fight this organism. All right, so we have two traps going on to end this episode, which was fantastic. We have the one trap they set for the Dem demogorgon, which is a demogorgon, but it's also a new type of creature. It's not, or at least, yeah, it's definitely a different one, right? I'm getting that vibe because this is more like a dog. The girl even says, is that a dog? So we have a demo, unless it grows into what the other Demogorgon was, the tall thing that didn't seem like it, it walked around or ran around like a dog. So we have the trap for the Demogorgon dog and that shit pops off real cool. Steve goes out for a moment there. It was a bit tense. I know there's no way they're going to kill him in the middle of his story with Nancy and Jonathan and that whole thing. So I wasn't quite afraid yet, but I thought maybe he would get messed up or, or hurt to some degree. And the ultimate trap. Will's like, I know how to defeat it. I think I do. There's this area you got to go to. So the dogs run away and Steve's like, nah, they're going to something. They're not running away from us. And then we look back at the uh, research facility and they're going in the tunnels and they find that the grave site, which rem remember when I called that episode filler, now it clicks why they did that. And so much of this writing is glorious. If you are going into writing and stuff, I would highly recommend you just watch these back to back and pay attention to the writing, why they do these scenes, this scene into this scene and stuff like that. You're supposed to do that with a lot of different things anyway, but this in particular, because now look at this, you had the episode that was previously was kind of fillery, right? But it was to highlight where he was. If they showcase that that one grave site in a five minute scene and then boom it's over and that's it oh he goes there he finds this and then he leaves it wouldn't be as dramatic like th does something happen there we remember that it's like an event we're not going to forget that moment so when they walk in there and that there's that grave site instantly we think there's nothing there he was there you know what i'm saying so this is obviously uh i guess what it seems like is the demogorgons 
brought food back here and they would all eat on. And now we know there's more than one, there's multiple ones. And again, the Demogorgons, are they all, everything that Will spit up? Like, was he spitting up those Demogorgons? So all those were, essentially, did they all come from Will? That's what I got out of it. But anyway, so they see the the, um, the grave site, and it was a trap for the soldiers, and that's how they ended this episode. And I was like, oh, man, <laughs> I got to just let's talk about this and let me dive into the next episode because that was off the hook. Uh, I even hung a huge curtain over the, the damn window here. This window pisses me off. When the sun moves around, everything, the sun, you can catch it picking up on the screen. So I'm like, oh, I'm in heaven. This season is probably already uh, better than the first, you know? And it's a weird way because I don't want it to make it seem like the first isn't good. The first is perfect for the story it's telling. But for a sequel that... Uh, or second season that I was even worried there not, might not be enough story and there's they even opened it up with having potentially more story and they didn't even fully embrace that yet at this point we were six episodes in and they didn't even embrace that yet and they still got so much I feel like there's so many more episodes that could come after this I am definitely feeling good about what's to come so uh, that's it for episode six give me an hour well don't give me an hour uh, I'm gonna watch episode seven and then give me a bit I'm going to upload it. Uh, maybe I'll do this where I record me doing the review. I'll watch the episode, record the review, and then when I get done, I'll just start posting them back to back, hopefully, because that might be easier, and then that way you guys can look forward to them. Okay, in a half an hour, the other review is going to be up. Let me shut up and get to the next episode. Leave your thoughts, theories, opinions, predictions, suggestions and anything else down in that comment i had a hiccup it almost killed me it almost killed me mid-sentence i'm gonna shut up go watch it <laughs> i'm out of here i'm gone I'm, let me ah bye